On today's show, we take you to the Niagara region to showcase seven incredible courses. Also, Selkie winner Mike Pekka takes on the agitator Andrew Peters in the battle of former Sabres. This is Score Golf, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by TaylorMade, the number one driver in golf. Molson Canadian 67, the official beer of the PGA of Canada and the RBC Canadian Open. Tourism Prince Edward Island, come for the golf, stay for the party. Hello Canada and welcome to Score Golf and today we are in beautiful Niagara Falls, Ontario, home of of course the world famous falls but also some fabulous wineries and seven amazing golf courses that make up the Niagara Golf Trail. We're going to show you all seven of those as well. One of them is in Buffalo which is of course home of the Sabres and our tee off season today features two legendary Sabres. That's coming up a little bit later but to kick things off we're going to start right here the amazing 36 hole complex at Legends on the Niagara. The first of the seven facilities that we'll feature in the Niagara region is the Legends on the Niagara, and it's truly a battle between designers here. The property has two 18-hole courses designed by two of Canada's top modern-day course architects. Douglas Carrick designed our battlefield course behind me, and our other course is Usher's Creek, and it was co-designed by uh, Thomas McBroom. Battlefield provides a unique and challenging treat with wide, generous fairways and undulating greens. The course offers a mix of link style holes with long fescue as well as parkland style featuring trees lining many greens and fairways. The 18th hole offers a stunning view of the clubhouse. It's a long par 5 finisher that's heavily protected by water and beached bunkers. The best option on this hole is to play it close to the pond in order to give you a shorter approach shot to this mammoth green. Usher's Creek provides a contrasting parkland style to its counterpart. It's an elegant design that flows with the land and uses landmarks and strategic bunkers as good targets to aim at. With water along the entire left side of the sixth hole, it's sure to intimidate any player. It's a dog leg left tee shot. There's fescue and bunkers on the right hand side of the hole. The left hand side is a, a huge pond. It's a very uh, risk reward second shot with the green being quite large, but again surrounded by bunkers and water. It's a very difficult hole. Even if you flare a few balls into the water or the forest, this Niagara Parks course offers a tranquil abode. If you're a fan of McBroom and Carrick's designs, then Legends on the Niagara is a must. You'll even forget that these contrasting courses are on the same property when you play them back to back. To make your getaway in Niagara a grand time, don't forget about Grand Niagara Golf Club, designed by Reese Jones. I think Reese Jones built a, a golf course that uh, you sort of get lost by yourself. There's people out here, you won't hear them, you won't see them and to a golfer that means something. The traditional parkland style course offers up rolling fairways that provide ample landing areas yet large fairway bunkers still provide a pretty good defense. Grand Niagara is just shy of 7,500 yards from the tips so your driving game will need to be sharp to make it around this track but if you're not up for longer yardages you can still choose between three other sets of tees that are somewhat friendlier. Wherever you play from, the pristine playing conditions and immaculate greens will add to the enjoyment of playing Grand Niagara. Number two is probably our signature par four. From the back tees, we play just about 460 yards. Big collection pond on the right-hand side, undulating green. Par's a very good score there. The longest par three is the 15th, which plays just over 230 yards. Probably our best set par three out here. Just a good bold hole, elevated tee, going into an elevated green surrounded by some big bunkers, a two-tier green that uh, is very penal. Before that hole is the short and beautiful par 4 14th. You'll have to lay up on this one and leave a short iron or wedge over a creek into an elevated green. Grand Niagara will test your game and as with all these courses in the Niagara region, the scenery is spectacular and the experience superb. You won't want to miss this great track. Public golf in a private setting. That's the mantra at Royal Niagara. Ted Baker Design offers 27 holes of challenging golf. The courses here at Royal Niagara, I mean, they've got three terrific nine holes and there's not too many 27-hole uh, courses in Niagara. There's a, a course for everybody to play. The three nines are the Escarpment, the Old Canal and the Iron Bridge. As the name of the course would suggest, the Escarpment course 
takes advantage of the glorious landscape and provides elevation changes and tight fairways. The seventh hole is a par three where you'll face a small pond in front of the green and three bunkers surrounding it. Hitting the center of the green is your best shot at a birdie anywhere else and you'll find it very difficult to get up and down. Next, the old Canal 9 is dominated by water. It's nestled next to the historic Welland Canal and provides liquid hazards on all but two holes. The third hole is a par 4 that plays just over 400 yards from the back blocks. Accuracy is crucial as anything off the fairway will likely disappear into the water hazards surrounding the hole. And last but definitely not least is the Iron Bridge course which is named after the bridge found on the par 4 third hole. If you can keep your tee shot in play, you'll have a good shot at birdie as there isn't much danger around the green. After the break, Mike Pekka and Andrew Peters face off in our Molson's tee off season. The tee off season is brought to you by Molson 67. And our tour of the Niagara region continues and uh, we're here at the Legends with a couple of Legends here, a couple of Sabres who are going to take part in our match today and uh, Mike Pekka, of course, the captain, uh, many years with the Sabres as well as a few other teams as well. Andrew Peters, you spent some great time uh, in Buffalo. You guys are both down here in this Niagara region. There's some fantastic golf down here. Uh, do you take advantage of it, Mike? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Buffalo's got uh, some great golf courses, but you know, you just hop the board to get in the Niagara region and uh, there, is, there are plenty of great golf courses. All right, and Andrew, uh, you are uh, trying to negotiate for some strokes I heard well and, well two things one legit legend one legend in my own mind however I you know I've, I've actually worked to focus my game on I've, I've become a scratch golfer in, in recent years so I'm, I'm actually I'm cool if Mike wants some strokes <laughs> par five we're starting with he's got a five wood he's using illegal golf balls he's getting those shots <laughs> well we'll uh, go mano a mano then let's uh, let's get going here boys like a Selkie trophy winner should crush down the middle Advantage Pekka. <laughs> you know that bullfrog. Oh no. Oh no. Hey. Hey, what's going on here? Where's the rules official? Uh oh. Not the start Peters was looking for. Ah, oh, come on. Hey. Hey, one for one in fairways hit. Now Peters is hitting his third shot. Okay, that'll run. Well, you know, I had to come out of the crap there, and it's like... It's not bad, though. Got some distance. <laughs> hey, at some point, we may ask for a le playing lesson, all right? <laughs> Did you get your, aim, your pin finder, you know, the distance? No, I think, there? I think it's somewhere back in Buffalo. It's amazing Nicholas uh, won 18 majors without it. It's all right. Great shot, Pex. <laughs> oh, my God. Peters was an agitator on the ice, and clearly he is trying to get into Pekka's kitchen here on the course. Will it work, though? Well, not looking like it. Mulligan. <laughs> I'm taking my mulligan. <laughs> Mike, throw me a ball. <laughs> you have no more. Yeah, yeah. They're on the woods. ROB. <laughs> the first, first soul. No, it went in the woods. Hit the tree and went in the woods. There you go. There you go. See, that's what I was looking for the first time. That's got some height on it. Come on, drop down in the flag, babe. Good shot. It's taken five shots, but Peters is finally close to the green. See, Mike warmed up before he went to the range. I did. I just got here. Okay, Andrew, a little bit of a rough start here, but uh, <laughs> Mike's kind of got you by the short ones here. Uh, I'm not even sure what you're lying, but uh, basically, I think you have to chip this next shot in. Well, historically, if you ask anyone that knows me, I'm, I'm a bit of a slow starter. Okay. So, uh, par fives aren't my forte, because no, it is more shots. I normally average five shots per hole. So if you think about a par five, if it takes a good golfer like Mike to get there in five, I'm getting there in like nine. But soft hands are my specialty. Come on, baby. Slow down, good shot. Now can Pecker reach the green in three? That was silky. Silky, silky for the silky. Now that's why you play hard defense and you can score a goal. Nice shot. I think even if this goes in, you can probably... Uh, Four putt to win? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if anybody that knows me that's golf with me, they know that there's a chance of that happening. <laughs> You're a good stick handler, right? You guys witnessing the biggest sandbagger in sports right here? Michael Pekka. That's got a chance. Whoa! Big finish. Up and down, eh, boys? Isn't that what they call that when you're going for triple? 
Pekka has at least three tries at this putt to win the hole. He misses, but still goes up one. Easy par, that's probably still good enough. And it doesn't look like anything is going to go Peter's way. All right, big start for you, Mike. That was a, uh, a good hole to, uh, to start off with. I think you took advantage of him, but, uh, but he's, uh, he's fighting back here. He says he's promised to fight back. Now, speaking of golf swings, uh, you took a famous golf swing on the ice one time that kind of got you kicked out of, the, uh, out of the game. We're not going to kick you out of this tournament, but uh, you should. tell us what happened there and reenact it for us. Well, I, I did. I reenacted for you on the first tee on my mulligan, I think. So um, if, if uh, the Leafs knew anything about my golf the game then, they would not have been threatened by my actions on the ice nor my golf game. Actually, I took it pretty hard uh, in the media from O'Neill and McCabe. They were talking about uh, this guy's not going to play in the playoffs anyway, so if he wants to join our force, then he can. Which, you know, I'm a man. I can take it. What I did was pretty stupid, but I'm guessing they probably wouldn't want me in the force him after the day anyway. <laughs> Well, uh, you guys have uh, another hole here. Mike, you can close them out here. You know, we've never actually had one of these matches only go two holes, so a little pressure on the big guy here. I'm all about making history. <laughs> all right, let's go. Mmm, that's beautiful. That was in the center of the club face. Great shot. Oh. Real nice. The key to any struggling golfer, when you're down by strokes, I only have one more hole until we don't show Mike this. He doesn't have to know the secrets, but I'm just telling you, if you're struggling in a ground of golf, always go to the basket. Always. Yes! We're crushed! He's not giving up yet. A little swing oil there, eh, boys? Nice Very shot. nice, Andrew. Oh, LA, oh, LA Kings type me. resiliency. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so he might have been sandbagging you on that first hole. He's think? not. He's gonna balloon an, an, a wedge up in the wind here. Caught a little thin, that might work. <laughs> Look at this shot. Oh my God. It's dancing. Uh -oh. Stuck one in there pretty good, Andrew. As expected, Peters has a few tricks up his sleeve. That could be pretty good. Oh boy. That's nah, left too. Oh, he's right there with me. Still a little room. He's going to get outside you too. And now putting will decide this match. The sweeper. Pitch out, runner not, not going. That much. Tap it in. Just tap, tap, tap it in. Too hard. Bye bye. Hit your, hit it, hit it. Oh, almost got the ricochet. That would have been awesome. Peters is way too long. He'll likely have to drill this second putt to tie. I don't even know if I'm going to make that one. I'm not going to make this one. <laughs> Here is Pekka for the win. Just lag it up there. Ah! Victory! Victory! I'll tell you what though, I'm a nice enough guy to take my glove off to shake a hand when I lose. Hey, nice job, Mike. Well, first time ever here on the tee-off season, Mike Pekka, a two-hole victory, and uh, you get the uh, the hardware here. I know this will, this will go right up on the shelf beside your Selkie trophies, right? Two of them, two. There's two O's and Goose, eh? <laughs> two Selkie trophies. <laughs> and and we get to put the, uh, the tradition is that the loser puts the jacket on the oh, winner. Oh, gold so. jacket, green jacket, red jacket. Yeah, uh, this is left the outcast from Don Cherry's uh, Goodwill store. Very nice. I think. So Do I have to put this on? No, you just put, put it on, on me. Do I have to play? Oh, you win it? Yeah. Oh my Thanks, God. Buddy. <laughs> oh my God. And then also. It's like you guys were expecting him to I win. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Look, it fits like a, hey, it fits like a, not OJ's glove, but it fits like a glove. <laughs> and we get to, uh, you get a little TaylorMade SLDR driver, Very courtesy nice. of our friends at uh, TaylorMade. So we'll uh, awesome. fit you for that one. So congratulations Thank and uh, big two hole victory. What do you have to say? I have to say, if you had told me that all this was going down, I might've found a worse golfer than me. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations guys. When we return, a look at a few more beautiful courses in the Niagara region. That's the skyline of Niagara Falls off in the distance. It's really only a driver away, or maybe a John Daly driver away. And that's appropriate because I'm standing on a John Daly signature golf course. This is Thundering Waters, one of the other great options down here in the Niagara region. There are so many great courses. Let's take a look at this one. Just 1,500 yards from the falls is Thundering Waters Golf Club. And despite being able to see the skyline of the strip for many holes, the course is a sanctuary from the hustle and bustle of the famous tourist area. It was designed by long-hitting John Daly and his touch is everywhere here. 
From the staff all decked out in Daly's trademark loudmouth clothing, to the carts that have the flashy designs on them, to the course itself, you'll see and sense Long John at every turn. While Daly may be known for his mammoth drives, he designed Thundering Waters to be playable for those who don't hit it 300 yards off the tee. It's relatively short. It's only 6,500 yards from the Daly tee deck, but I say Thundering Waters is the ultimate risk-reward course. The course has two distinct parts, an open Scottish-style section and a tree-lined parkland side. The holes flow nicely through both and will challenge golfers while still giving them lots of opportunity to enjoy themselves. On the second hole, Daly provided a tribute to the road hole at the old course, with a dogleg right that has the feel of the famous 17th at St. Andrews. And a hole later, a tricky par 3 that tees off from an elevated tee to a big green will challenge accuracy and club selection. The 11th hole is a true John Daly risk reward par 4. Longer hitters can brave it out and go for the green on the drive, but a miss usually means water, or play safe and out to the left and try to use a short iron to get it close and make birdie. There's a good chance for a birdie on the following hole too, the 12th, a meaty par 5 that is one of the course's signature holes. Very, very tight tree-lined fairway, a lot of water certainly uh, shows the tightness of the course. Thundering Waters is not only a fun course to play, but an enjoyable place to be. As with Daly himself, a casual atmosphere pervades the facility. Beachwood Golf and Country Club is the perfect course for families and golfers looking for a light and fun round. It's a great place to come for beginners or even seasoned players looking to tune up their game. You'll get great value for your buck here at Beachwood with primetime green fees that are under $40 and include a cart. Value doesn't get much better than this. The traditional rolling golf course, it's, uh, uh, we have water on 13 of the 18 holes, but the water is not always directly in front of the holes. It's off to the side or down to the side of the fairway, so it makes for a very interesting golf course. It's 18 good golf holes. The 15th hole on the course is a par 5 with a dog leg right that will lead you to an elevated green. The ninth hole is another signature hole with the clubhouse in the backdrop and a small green as your target. But don't hit too long, otherwise you'll lose your ball on the clubhouse patio. It's usually into the prevailing wind. It's a green that slopes towards the water, you can get some funny kicks. It's a premium on accuracy. Golf is a social game and meant to be enjoyed among friends, and that's what Beachwood is all about. Family values are rooted within the course's history. For over 50 years, the course has been owned and operated by the same family. That's why golfers of all ages and skill are welcomed with open arms. When you play here, you're considered part of the Beechwood family. A few stick lengths away from the falls on the American side of the border is Seneca Hickory Stick. Opened in 2010, this Robert Trent Jones Jr. design provides a pristine golf course from tee to green. One of the things Robert Trent Jones Jr. has done here is create a lot of optical illusions for the golfer where it may look very narrow. On the other side of the curves and the mounds of the golf course is open fairway. It's a link style design with 14 holes with hazards on them, 67 bunkers out there, but fairways as wide as wide out there. The sixth is a tricky par four and poses issues for some of the most skilled players. It's a dual fairway and you can go up the right side and keep it away from the crick which splits the fairway in half or go up the left side and have a nice little short shot into the green. If you want to take the water out of play, definitely the smartest way to go. To finish the front nine, golfers are faced with a long par five which calls for accuracy on every shot. With a water hazard to the right and traps on the left of the fairway, you'll need some straight shots while approaching the signature double green. The 16th hole will give you a good chance at a birdie if you can keep it to the right side of the pond lining the entire side of the hole. A decent drive should put you around the 100 yard mark and will leave you just a short iron into the green. And to finish off the round, you're up against a short par three, one that sees you return to the double green that you saw on number nine. It's a scenic view and if you can get it up and over, there's a good chance you can finish your round with an easy par. The course has been rated one of the best new golf courses in the United States and is a visual treat that you'll want to try out when in the Niagara region. After the break, we'll wrap up the show, but not before we visit a classic Niagara Stanley Thompson design. Whirlpool Golf Course is one of Canada's best known and highly rated public courses. 
An enduring classic, it's undergone many alterations over the years since its opening in 1951, but it's still very much a design of its master golf course architect, one of Canada's best. World famous Canadian arch architect Stanley Thompson. Uh, this was his last design. Typical to a Stanley Thompson course, it's a parkland style course. Uh, very much so, what you see is what you get. From one great designer to another, Doug Carrick has also had a hand in what Whirlpool is today. For instance, he redesigned the second hole at Whirlpool in the late 90s, and that hole stands as one of its best. He changed the whole green complex, he added a man-made pond, some mounding, some new bunkers. Um, it's Whirlpool's signature hole now. Being precise off the tee is imperative to being able to have a reasonable look and a reasonable distance for your approach, uh, and it's a good, solid par four. The sixth hole, which has the Skylon Tower on the horizon, is the most scenic par three on the course. In a typical Thompson touch, the green is surrounded by five bunkers, making it tough to get on this putting surface. If your ball often finds its way into the closest water hazard, well, you may be safe for the most part on this track, except for this hole. The 14th, named Great Grief, is a short par three that needs to be played perfectly to avoid the pond and the bunker surrounding the green. The 16th hole may be the most scenic view on the course, yet don't let the view fool you. It may also be the most demanding. The 18th is a great finishing hole. It's a shorter par five and gives you a chance to reach the green in two, yet that may be easier said than done. Whirlpool is a Stanley Thompson course that needs to be played. The master's touch is clear from the first tee to the final putt, and the ability to experience this classic is something that shouldn't be missed. Week Speaks brought to you by Bushnell, the undisputed number one laser rangefinder in professional golf. One of the greatest parts about golf is the handicap system. Now in our tee-off season match today, we had Mike Pekka, who's a three handicap, taking on Andrew Peters, who's probably 23 or possibly even more. But if they played using the handicap system, they could actually have an even match. Mike could give Andrew a number of shots and they could play even using those shots to balance out their scores. It's one of the great features about golf that Jack Nicklaus can play me and I would get uh, 13 or 14 or 15 shots from Jack Nicklaus and we could have an even match. It really is about the only sport where this can happen. And if you want to keep your handicap for free, you can do it at scoregolf.com. Just head there and look for the handicapper. That's all the time we have for our show today. Thanks to everyone down here in Niagara. It's been a beautiful trip down here, folks. Niagara Falls is a fabulous place to go. Have a glass of wine, look at the falls, and play some great golf. And we will see you next time right here on Score Golf. Clothing provided by Ashworth. All we do is golf.